Hey guys, I know it's been a while since you've seen my face on YouTube, but here we are, 2023. This is the year that all the 2022 bangers have moved into. So we're going to have a very busy 12 months coming up on the channel. You have killer games like Forspoken, maybe, Hogwarts Legacy, Dead Space Remake, which I'm super pumped for after Callisto Protocol, Starfield, Diablo 4, Atomic Heart, Stalker 2, hopefully. Now, it's going to be busy, so stay tuned. And you can also find us on twitch.tv forward slash bearded breakdown, link in the description. And we are streaming like Elden Bling, we are streaming Satisfactory and Valheim, community content. Join us for Elden Ring, Elden Ring's fun, it's a fun stream. Um, and yeah, so you can find us there. And I'll also be playing the games I'm reviewing there when they come out. So come and join us and I'll see you soon there. But anyways, I was thinking about Diablo 4 recently. I was thinking, man, I wish there was something that I could play that would fill that Diablo 4-esque hole in my life. You know, I played a couple of different things. I played Path of Exile. It's like, okay, this is cool. I like the cosmetics. But ultimately, I didn't like the seasonal content. Like, I didn't like the fact that I had to wipe my progression and then learn a new gimmick every single season. I thought, ah, oh, I wish there was a game that had more staying power. Eventually, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to Lost Ark, which is a Korean MMO. Now, immediately from first glance, when you look at the gameplay trailers, you think, wow, this is very similar to Diablo. It has the typical ARPG camera, looking down on the character, flashy moves, going through dungeons. It literally looks like Diablo. Except when you look more closely, you see that it's very robust and there's big, grandiose moves and complete obliteration. Where in Diablo, you kind of have that, like you did have that with the Tempest of Justice set or like if you're playing Witch Hunter or something like this, Witch Doctor, sorry. And I was like, oh, this is very interesting. Now, the thing that's really important here is that Lost Ark, being a Korean MMO, has a very different culture to Western games. So on one side you have Lost Ark, and on the other side you have Diablo, which is a Western game. Now, there's a lot to say about this game, and this is essentially what the video is about. It is about what can you play to fill in that Diablo 4 void. And I think Lost Ark is a good suggestion and recommendation for people to pick up if they want something to fill their time with. Now, Lost Ark is a very strange anomaly in the gaming world. The reason is, is its combat is so satisfying in almost every facet that when you play it, it's very addictive. And as all things that are addictive, it has a certain relationship with you. You'll have highs and you'll have lows. Sometimes Lost Ark will make you feel like this. And in other times, it will make you feel like this. And even like this. Ah, you're teasing me, naughty naughty. Do not come. I'm gonna come. Lost Ark's vertical progression is probably some of the steepest in any MMO. As you reach further into the story, you attain gear which allows you to power up your character via crafting. You farm materials from dungeons and by beating huge monsters called guardians, and over time you'll hit certain thresholds which allow you to take on harder content. And this harder content can range from more involved dungeons to full-blown multi-stage raids. And this incremental leveling of your character provides a tangible difference in sheer numbers and even how the characters play, leading into the perpetual improvement cycle that players find themselves in. For many players, the grind is what makes this game fun. 
And I personally love the fact that I have a game to return to that allows for that incremental progression. It's a form of comfort and you always have it there. Things become a bit more convoluted as you start to expand your character roster though, which allows for six characters at the start of the game with the option to unlock more. Each character has to be leveled manually or by using a power pass, which lets you skip to the current level of your main character. Now, as your roster expands, so does the need for more resources. And this is where the main gameplay loop comes in. Each of your six characters can earn gold. Now the gold is a player driven currency that allows you to upgrade your gear, buy items from various vendors and use it on the auction house. You earn said gold by playing raids mostly. You have a couple of other options too, including selling hard earned items on the auction house, but for the most part, it's raiding that will earn your way. So what makes Lost Ark worth playing? Well, that's a broad conversation. So let's start with the biggest factor to why someone would want to play Lost Ark. Without a shadow of a doubt, Lost Ark has some of the best combat to ever grace the MMO space. The character classes for the most part have been designed in a way that makes them feel unique and impactful. Whether it be massive hammer wielding destroyers landing a single hit over 100 million, or a frantic barrage of fists from a taijutsu martial artist, the Scrapper. Combat feels weighty and the animations are fantastic, especially for the newer classes. Speaking of classes, Lost Ark gets a new class every few months and regular updates to the balance, which is at now five months per interval. Now, this always means that the meta is always shifting in some way, shape or form. And for the most part, devs keep their ears to the ground to address player concerns about balance. This keeps things fresh when you are starting your 18th character and are excited to gear it for the end game. Combat plays a key role in the enjoyment of the game and as you start pushing your character into the depths of the end game, the numbers get bigger and bigger and providing a more satisfying reward, especially if you play a burst class such as the Surge Deathblade, which is an assassin class. So the combat is great and so is the world building. It's amazing what these devs have accomplished both in the open world and the raids. Now this is a Korean MMO and so by that nature there is a lot of grind and I mean lots. The western audience aren't used to this level of grind that's for sure. And it can be really off putting for someone who isn't used to it. I won't hide the nature of this beast from anyone, that's for sure. So if you do decide to get involved and you want to reach the end game, know that there is a lot of content to chew through. And as a new player, this experience can be very daunting. There's lots to consider and the end game culture can be quite cutthroat with people chasing the meta character builds at all times. And the Lost Ark community tends to be incredibly vulnerable to FOMO, which negatively affects the market board. It makes prices soar out of control, which definitely needs to be addressed by tackling issues such as inflation in the player driven economy. These are prevalent issues brought up by the community consistently since the launch of the game in the West. And to be fair, Smilegate have already implemented features in the Korean version of the game that allows for players to participate in the end game content. However, there still is a lot of gatekeeping, there's a lot of grind, so know what you're getting into before you commit. Ultimately, what you'll find is that Lost Ark has deep progression systems, engaging combat and an incredible world. This will keep you running back to its addictive gameplay loop, and for many people this keeps them playing well past the 1000 hour mark. Although not devoid of its mistakes with disconnects, bots and gatekeeping being major issues, it still provides a wealth of content for those looking to fill their time. Now this is a Korean MMO, so you can expect booba, pay to win aspects that are borderline egregious and a heavy emphasis on a player driven economy as you go along. 
Now, keep everything in mind as you are playing the game and you'll be in for a great time. Accept it for what it is. Don't try to make it something it's not. And that way, everything else will go much smoother for you. Enjoy it while it's here. And if you're waiting for Diablo 4, this is a great time sink. And there we have it. This is the what do you play while you wait for Diablo 4. Now, the reality of the situation is that Diablo 4 is still quite a long way away. It is such a shame that it got delayed, but Lost Ark is a great game if you want to fill that Diablo void in the meantime. And hey, if you fall in love with it and you end up playing a lot, great for you. The content is always being refreshed and updated with new classes and patches and regions and there's a lot to love now as long as you understand like i said earlier the nature of the beast know that this is a korean mmo and there are gonna be things that come with it being a korean mmo if you can get past that aspect and you can just look at what the game fundamentally offers you i think you'll have a really really good time Anyway, guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Guys, this is a shout out to all you people watching the videos and participating in the Twitch streams. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are new to the channel, guys, if you like the content, give it a like, sub or whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. I really appreciate it. We're growing here. And once again, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash bearded breakdown. I hope to see you guys there and wait for the next video. It'll be out soon, hopefully. Catch you later. Bye.